Hi, I'm Alex Nodgrass, and this is The Bandsaw Life. My name is Alex Snodgrass. I am with Carter Products, and we are going to show you how to set up the saw for resaw and small blade. First thing that we want to do before we do anything with the saw, please, please, please unplug it. Save the digits, okay? Get our fence out of the way here. We're going to take our table off the saw. Anytime that you do a full adjustment on a bandsaw, take the table off. It will make it a thousand times easier to adjust the saw. You'll be able to see the upper and lower guides and how they work with each other. Okay? Even if you have a saw like this one here where you've got to take the four bolts out of the trunnion, it makes it worth the effort to take it off so that you can get that adjustment just right. We'll open this up. Take our blade off. Now, how many of you have blades hanging on the wall like this because nobody showed you how to make them look like that. Well, I'm going to show you an easier way that doesn't require some practice, but first let's talk about opening a blade because I've had way too many people say, well, I just throw them. Well, throw a blade, bend a tooth, you've ruined the blade. Let the blade separate in between your two hands there, and you'll notice that there's a split on either side. Grab either one, and it gives you a controlled opening every time. When you want to fold the blade, put the back edge on the floor, put it in the arch of your foot so that you're not stepping on those teeth again, hand palm up, twist it to you once, twice, and push straight down. Perfect fold every time. No practicing. All right. Set that right there for the moment. Now, I'm going to start de-adjusting every one of these guides, opening them up because I want you all to see step by step how we adjust this saw and I want everyone to notice that as we adjust number one it's going to go extremely fast it's there really isn't much to it but if you do this in the order that I show you you will get a perfect result every time let's start with the tires if you've got rubber tires make sure they're glued down if they're not what happens is rubber with that centrifugal force causes it to sag, it doubles up, throws the blade off, you stop the saw, everything looks normal and you wonder why your blade got thrown off, more than likely the rubber tires are not glued down. Make sure they're glued down, don't pull them off, put glue on them and try to stretch them back over, all you're going to have is a bunch of glue running down the front of the wheel. Raise it up with a screwdriver or anything, usually uh, contact cement has a dauber on it, just kind of run around the tire both top and bottom, you're good to go. Do not replace rubber tires with urethane tires hoping to get better performance. It doesn't work that way. Urethane tires last longer and don't require glue, so they're the natural replacement if rubber tires, if your rubber tires are worn out. But remember, a tire is nothing more than a separation from a steel wheel and a sharp steel blade to keep them from touching and dulling your blade. So again, don't replace your rubber tires or urethane just for better performance. Now, what we're going to do, we've got all of our guides opened up here. We're going to install our blade. We'll go over one more thing before we get into our adjustment. I've been doing this for about 22 years, so I've had a day or two of practice on a bandsaw. But when it comes to putting a blade on a wheel. I'm amazed at how many people tell me the blade should be in the center of the wheel. That is incorrect. The deepest part of the gullet should always be in the center of the wheel. Here's why. And by the way, let me clarify, the gullet is the space in between the teeth. The deepest part of that gullet is what should be in the center of the wheel. Remember, a wheel is crown. If you put the blade in the center of the wheel, those teeth are out there in no man's land, unsupported, and you're going to get a cut like this. Back them up so that the deepest part of the gullet is in the, wheel, in the center of the wheel. Now the tooth is supported, and here's the second thing. The side guides that you have to adjust front to back to compensate for the different size blades, you'll never have to move again because it doesn't matter whether it's an eighth or a three-quarter inch blade, the deepest part of the gullet is always in the same spot, 
That means the side guides never have to be moved again. Now, when it comes to tension, you want to make sure you set that before you begin to adjust the guide. You can follow this gauge here on the back. I'm not a big fan of it because if you aren't using computerized welded blades, say somebody welds a blade an eighth inch long or an eighth inch short, this now lines up in a quarter inch different spot because you've got two sides of the blade. You can use this as a nice reference, but not a guarantee. Before the guides are set, with absolutely nothing but a blade on the wheels, tapping on the side of the blade, you should get no more than one eighth inch movement either direction. Not pushing, not just tapping with one finger. You should get no more than an eighth inch. And it doesn't matter what size the blade is. Could be the large blade or the small blades. Tapping on the side, you're ready to go. Now, the last thing I want to cover before we begin to adjust this is coplanar. I've had way too many people tell me, well, I need to adjust my wheel out because my wheels are not coplanar. Please, please, please do not mess with your wheels. Here's why. Manufacturers set up the wheels for a, a specific way for a specific reason. How many of you in here have used a belt sander? Probably everybody. When you turn that little knob on the side, what happens is the belt takes off. If you don't turn it back, what happens? It keeps right on going. If you line these wheels up so dead perfect, that's exactly what you're going to have a, is a blade that you can't control and keep in one spot. And when you turn this, you're going to have to back it off and really tweak with it. They are actually angled to each other so that we can turn this knob and it moves and stays. This is pretty much a brand new saw. You'll notice the teeth or the deepest part of the gullet is in the center of the wheel. You'll notice it is not at the bottom. Let me kind of prove to you that coplanar really doesn't exist. I'm going to de-adjust this and bring that blade way forward on the top. Noticed nothing changed down here at the bottom. Please don't mess with your wheels. And if you do, call the manufacturer. They know more about their saw than anybody who thinks they know about a bandsaw. That being said, we've got our tension right. We're going to adjust that to where the deepest part of the gullet is back in the center of that wheel. We're now ready to start adjusting our guides. Now, we've got step number one, making sure the deepest part of the gullet, center of the wheel. Step number two, tension. Step number three, the side guides, where they should be on the blade. Basically, you want the front edge, whether you're using blocks or bearings, you want the front edge to be about a sixteenth of an inch behind the deepest part of the gullet. So we're just going to adjust the body to where it is one sixteenth of an inch behind the deepest part of that gullet, both top and bottom. Now, you want to get as much of the blade as encased as possible, but this is not the crucial adjustment. The most crucial adjustment on setting up the resaw is the next adjustment, and that is our thrust bearing. It should be a sixteenth of an inch, or basically as close to that blade as you can possibly get without it turning. Now, y'all are going to notice that when I adjust, I am constantly turning the wheel here. I do not use a feeler gauge. I don't use the dollar bill. They don't work. Okay? Remember, you don't know whether you're moving the blade or the bearing. So turn the wheel because you've got a spring, soft tires, and a flexible blade. The only way to see what is actually happening is by turning the wheel. Now, you can see that we're so close that it's touching just occasionally. Back that up just a little bit. And this may take a couple of adjustments. Make sure that you get this one right. If you get this one dead on, you will have absolute perfect resaw every time. See what happens if that bearing is turning before you begin to cut. You're pushing on the back edge of that blade, causing the front to flex one way or the other. There are generally two reasons why a blade is going to drift. One, the teeth are not in the right spot on the wheel. Two, you're pushing on the back edge, causing the front to deflect one way or the other. So let's do the exact same thing down here to the bottom. Now, there's a way to determine 
whether or not we've got this just right. I'm going to show you what that is. Okay. Boy, this one is just being a little bit obstinate today. All right. Now, we've got this set up to where neither of those bearings are turning. But you all know that this does not feel real good on the back of my fingers, those sharp points. I should be able to put the slightest amount of pressure on there to make that bearing turn. So close that it looks like it's going to touch, but it doesn't. Okay? Now both of them are turning. If I touch right in the center, they both turn. If I just turn the wheel, neither of them turn. Now, there's only one more step in adjusting this, and that's our side guides. Side guides, again, should be as close as you can possibly get without it actually touching the blade. All right. Now, as you can see, there is movement between there. They are not perfectly tight. Side guides are there to just simply bump the blade back into play. If you are rubbing against the side of the blades, you are causing enough friction and heat to destroy the blade. Let's put it this way. If steel has been yielded, fancy word for bent, okay? As soon as it gets friction or heat, it wants to come back to its original state. So that means even a bearing is going to create enough friction and heat to cause the teeth to come into a line, form a knife edge, and then it's going to seek the easiest route through the wood. Okay? So again, the more you can keep that blade cool, the longer it's going to last. Now, we are 100% set up. The last thing we've got to do is put our table on and level it. I'm going to show you how to do that and get it within three to five thousandths of an inch by using nothing more than a two by four. Drop our insert in, grab us a chunk of pine here. Now, anytime that you're going to level a table up, get yourself a piece of 2 by 4 And what I'm looking for is just something that I know is flat on both sides. I know it's been joined on both sides, so it's, it's good and flat. Try not to get a piece with a knot in it. We'll plug our saw back in. Got our dust collector on right down above our work. Now, I know my table is square because I've got my leveling pen set, but even I had to do this the first time. Make a simple cut. Flip the wood over. Bring it around back. If the blade will go back into the cut, we know that we're within three to five thousandths of an inch across the surface of the table, not just up one side or the other. Okay? So now comes Y'all's favorite part. Take our fence. We'll see if we've done this right. All right, now, when you set your fence, and by the way, anybody that has a fence on your saw, don't try to get everything just perfectly square. The nice thing about a band saw, as long as the fence is square or within a quarter of an inch of being that way, you should be able to get a straight cut. Reason being is a bandsaw blade has curve. It's wider in the front than it is in the back. So as long as you're within a fourth of an inch, you should be able to get a straight cut. So we're going to set it up about like such. And no, I'm not going to use that piece of pine. I am going to use a real piece of hardwood. Make sure that you see that it's constant pull. What I mean is don't over push it. What happens when you push just a little bit too fast, sawdust gets outside the bullet, rubs against the side of the blade, and then you get that bow in your cut. And that's generally from pushing just a little bit too fast. And if you just push with a nice, constant pace, you should get a nice, straight, accurate cut. How'd we do? dead on, accurate, end to end, just right. If you're going to do some extremely tall wood like this, make sure that your fence is as tall as whatever you're cutting. That way you've got support and you don't get that tip or tilt, okay? 
All right, now that goes over resol. Thank you all very much for your time. I hope that you enjoyed it.